There's absolutely no proof at all that the Tunisia beach gunner was a jihadist ISIS or Al Qaeda Muslim. But it is a fact that Saifedin Rezgui was a soccer fan. There's no jihadist goodbye video, no ISIS flags or Quran texts in his pockets, nothing whatsoever. It says he was a, he supported Real Madrid. Here too, Real Madrid. He liked break dancing. And so this this was in the newspaper. He enjoyed all the trappings of Western society. He was a supporter of Real Madrid. So this guy, he got really very, very set, um, upset when the uh, the Swiss Nazi police uh, racial profiled and humiliated the uh, Tunisian national soccer hero. Here's some pictures of him from the newspaper. And um, here it says Swiss. Well, oh, that sounds like Swiss, you know, so the French word for Switzerland, with the Templars um, for Sir Disease, how they pronounce Switzerland in the beginning. And um, well, this is not bad. He wrote, The heroes are all in their graves, the real men in prisons, and the traitors in the palace. I agree with that. That's quite good, eh? And uh, I'll come back to this later. This is completely <laughs> Photoshop. Here it, says, here it says he was a break dancer and loved football. He loved football. It says in the newspaper. Well, maybe he had some contacts in the mosque. But the uh, but this the the humiliation in Switzerland only six days before, that was the thing that really um, it was really the last drop, it really made him do what he did, and he was a sweet boy when he was younger, so he was a sensitive guy. You know, he was sensitive, and he couldn't take it what happened. You know how how the Arab how an Arab was again humiliated again and again and again so this was really the, the swiss racial profiling of their tunisian her hero national hero uh, yasin chikahui that really um, tipped him over into what happened but of course switzerland is clean you know they never done something wrong you know etc etc they always there's no newspaper will ever ever write something bad about switzerland so even even if he was like you know influenced by um uh, more uh, jihadists like muslims there was this thing that happened in switzerland that made him made him tip over that really flipped him out it says, he d described him as good, good, good. He was never in problem with anybody else. So this, this was, it was a sensitive guy. He just couldn't take it anymore. What Swissy did. This is what I've been telling you all the time. Even the newspapers say it. He was a soccer fan. Wakey, wakey. And the Swiss knew exactly what they were doing. They knew the consequences. The Swiss banks and Octagon, they want war. Like the other Second World War and, and, and the First World War, they just want people to fight each other. And then blame it on the Muslims. And I say, no, 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 no. This is not okay. It's not the truth. Let's forget about the war on Islam propaganda and look at the facts only. It is for fact that he was a soccer fan, and it is no fact at all that he was an ISIS jihadi on the contrary. Here it says, again, he was a Real Madrid, that's the, the Spanish soccer team, the best one in, in Spain, a, a loving breakdancer, 
who became brainwashed by extremism, or you might add, add and triggered by Switzerland, by the Swiss octagon Nazis. If I scroll it down here, look, there's some more. Even, even the newspapers say it, you know. Here's again. He was a football-loving young man. And... Uh, sensitive guy. He just got fed up with it all. Again, a Muslim humiliated. And again, here again, Real about he was posting about Real Madrid and the Tunisian national football team. And who's the captain of the Tunisian national football team? Well, that's Yassin Chikahoui. That's the guy who got incredibly harsh, humiliated by the Swiss only six days before. So this guy knew about it. He probably even saw my video in which I talk about this and what happened. And um, the Swiss triggered him. Believe me. There's no proof that this guy was a uh, jihadi. Yes, again, he, lo he was a break dancer and loved football. And he was good. Oh, there he is. It was the end of his football dreams. The Swiss triggered him. He knew about... He, he's 11 million Tunisians knew what the Swiss had done to their national hero. And he, and he was part of that. So, investigate it, you know. The authorities should have investigated how many... All these, all these Tunisians knowing about this. I mean, we're living in a time, and especially the Muslims, it doesn't need very much, and the Swiss know it. Many Arabs have just had enough, and it, do, it doesn't need any, any more. It's all over the world, you know. There's, well. And in the minutes after the shooting, the media instantly presents a picture of the young man with assault rifles, which is either a Photoshop with replica guns, or a young kid posing with two replica AKs. How do I know this? Well, first of all, the light intensity on the guns is not the same lumen as on the kid. And he looks like he's had a couple of beers on a party and do what kids do all over the world and post a selfie. And for an Arab kid, more likely identifying himself with a Kalashnikov rifle. How do I know they're replica pellet airsoft guns? Well, first of all, at first sight, not even an expert can tell the difference from a real weapon. And in most countries, any 10-year-old can buy them legally in a shop. The AK on the left looks like an AK-47 and the, uh, the one on the right looks like an AK-74, the newer version with the, uh, the lighter uh, bullets. Like someone collecting different models. Neither one of the guns has a single scratch nor worn out marks, and not even the mags that are first to wear out. And the mags definitely look plastic, new and replica. Here, yeah, look at it. There's not a single scratch on the um, on the mags. It's it's all new. It's it's all replica. Th these are soft air guns. It's not real. This one too. There's there's not a scratch on it. You see, and the and the guy has more light than the light on the guns. You know. It, it would be more shining here where the light uh, is, is coming at, uh, on the gun here. So, um, this part, you know, it's, it's not true. And this is the AK-47, the, uh, the 7.62 bullets, and this is the new lighter, um, almost like a 223 Remington, but not entirely the same. 
Uh, this has a huge stopping power, the AK-47, this has no stopping power. And I know how worn out jihadi guns look like as I spent one year in Afghanistan in 1985. And I'm neither a Muslim nor a Russian. These guys know they throw their guns on the ground lying in the dust and, and sand when praying, don't clean their guns and on many occasions don't even carry them but drag them behind. From what I saw they were just so busy praying and drinking tea the whole day they didn't even have the time to clean their guns. A prayer session was always prepared with grouping together and drinking tea. The same thing after the prayer as an entire social event knitted around it five times a day and incredibly time consuming. I mean I don't mind basically anyone is free to do whatever he likes within the reasonable limits but it's very hard to fight the Russian army with these guys. Oh, thank God the Russians were doing the same thing praying to their vodka bottles. So you can imagine what a jihadi gun looks like and with Tunisia's strict gun laws you will not be able to purchase a new Kalashnikov. Only some old Gaddafi army used ones from over the nearest border with Libya. So the gun's picture is a total hoax for the anti-Islam ag agenda and wars against other peoples. So here you can see a picture of some guns who were confiscated this year by, uh, by uh, uh, from in Paris from a, um, a guy who apparently wanted to blow up a, uh, a church. Look, look at how rusty the magazines are and, and this is not even in the desert, you know, or in Paris. Look at it, how rusty it is and here how it's worn out. Here rusty, here's rusty, the gun is rusty. These things rust, you know, if you don't oil them. Here it's all metal shining through, you know. The other guns, they, they look new, it's plastic, you know, it, it doesn't shine. With all the light the guy's having on his face and the guns don't shine like here. Look, here it shines, you see. These are metal mags, a real Kalashnikov mags. And they're rusty, I, you know, it, you can imagine the state of a mag. <laughs> in, in 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 Tunisia or in Afghanistan or you know coming out of Libya's army and all all the things this gun must have seen you know the rough life so it's it's a comp the, the picture is an entire complete hoax i tell you they're plastic guns these are real guns it's rusty and it's shiny and it's worn out the other ones it's a hoax I tell you, the Swiss Nazi Templar Octagon also has Muslim Arab members, um, an alliance from the days of the Crusades, but also through the Swiss great eminences François Genoux and Ahmed Huber al Swissri. Here you can see them. And the Al Taqwa Bank. And when the IRS in 2008 started to put pressure on the Swiss banks, Swissy applied for a banking license in Wahhabi Qatar, who said, well, okay, but we want to have the World, the World Soccer Championships 2022 in return to create a lot of black money selling alcohol to British hooligans in an alcohol-restricted Muslim country, like the Mafia making a fortune during the Prohibition bootlegging in the 20s. Thus, gaining more funds for Octagon, financing ISIS, who think they're fighting for Islam, like the equally Swiss-funded Nazis, making the Germans think to fight for Germania. So here you can see them. I already made a video about them. And this guy, I met him once, he threatened me. He came, he, he forced himself into our house because of a newspaper article I wrote, and very dangerous man. He, he was together with uh, the first time with four other men, the second time with five other men, and the sixth guy was an Arab. And this, I, I've, I've been telling this since, since uh, two, 2001. And I recently found out that it was him, you know. Well, they're both dead. And you're personally, personal friends of Adolf Hitler. So, you know, you see, the Al-Taqwa Bank is found is tied to Nazi supporters. 
So the Nazi, the Nazi Templars of Octagon, they are in it. And the Al Taqwa Bank, it was founded even in Switzerland. It, it says somewhere in the article. Wait a minute. So here's part of the article. Here it says the Al Taqwa Bank is founded in Switzerland. They are the ones behind it. And they that's why they triggered um the the beach shooter and uh, through the uh, the racial profiling of the national hero Yasin Chikahui who is of course innocent in all of this he has nothing to do with it but it's the swiss i tell you they're always behind it the swiss are all always in it they always are and making lots of money out of it believe me I already explained to you in some of my other videos how Swiss Nazis are involved in the Islamofascism at at the uh, at the highest levels, and you just saw it again. Uh, the 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 article I just showed you where not really Nazis behind the screens are behind it, you know, triggering triggering uh, and and financing it all, just as the Swiss Nazi police here. And this came out like uh, six days before the attacks. So you can imagine how this young guy and 11 million uh, Tunisians felt when they saw their hero, uh, national hero, like lying on the ground, like here. And well, the Swiss knew exactly what they uh, what the consequences would be. So when the Swiss Nazi police racially profiled the Tunisian soccer hero, Yassine Chikahoui. The octagon just had to eavesdrop their antennas out in Tunisia and find themselves one of the very angry Tunisians because of their national hero, so humiliated in Zurich. And they found that unemployed, frustrated, angry, breakdancing Tunisian soccer fan to revenge his football hero, provided him the hardware and probably some money for his family and dropped him off at the local beach. Most likely promising him a getaway car for a safe exfiltration after the action and a comfortable future in, a wealth, in the wealthy Emirates. And this is why he's the attacker, he seeming, seemingly aimlessly headed for the streets as if he was waiting for something or someone instead of continually sweeping the beaches in order to make more victims. You can see him walking around like he's waiting for something, you know, or well, the getaway car, the promises didn't get fulfilled, you know, no getaway car, so he knew that was it. So on May 27th, 2015, the US led arrests concerning the FIFA corruption, soccer corruption in Zurich, Switzerland, took place. And right the next day, Tunisia's soccer player, Yassin Chikahoui got racially profiled by the Swiss Nazi police. Anyone thinks it's a coincidence? Well, let me tell you, there are no coincidences in Switzerland. And all this is related to 40 dead on an Arab beach and Swiss Nazi banking FIFA jihadi corruption in the base of all evil, Octagon, in the Alps. And now they can blame Islam and the Arabs for it demolish their tourist industry to create more jobless desperate potential fighters for the political agenda with Swiss banks getting filthy rich and Octagon consolidating their total control worldwide blue army to control humanity